In this video, I'm going to present you a novel method that I suggest to correct for the errors when using a shift chair or Bartik instrument. This video aims for researchers who already use or know what is a shift chair or a Bartik instrument. Alongside the growing use of shift chair instruments, a literature specifically highlighting the potential bias of those instruments has emerged. One of the main worries with a shift chair instrument is that potentially the errors between observation with similar set of shares or of weight are dependent. And typically, the robust or spatially clustered or clustered standard errors do not take into account these specific dependencies between the errors. To address this issue, I'm using the arbitrary clustering framework to take into account this special dependency between the errors. First, I'm going to do a very short summary just to recall you what's a Bartik or shift chair instrument. Then, I'm going to explain how do I compute the distance or the similitude between different sets of weights for different observations. And finally, I will show you how the arbitrary clustering setup or framework is perfect to include and take into account this specific dependency structure. A shift chair instrument is built as the sum of the interaction between a set of shocks and a set of sensitivity parameter to this shock, respectively called the shift and the share part. Traditionally, those instruments have been used in labor economics, where, for example, the set of shocks of shifts were the total import or worldwide import of some goods used in some industry or produced in some industries. And then the sensitivity parameter to those shocks or to those variations were the size of each industry in each region. And in this context, the worry will be that regions with similar sets or structure of the industry with similar sets of weights will have also similar unobservables and hence the errors might be correlated. And again, the, the typical clustered or robust or even spatial correlation structure do not take those dependencies into account. The first step in this strategy is to compute the distance between the observations with respect to their set of weights or shares. To compute the dissimilarity, so the distance between each observation, between those sets of value for each observation, I'm using two or suggesting the use of two indices, the Jacquard dissimilarity index and the Bray Curtis dissimilarity index. Both have different properties that I explain more in detail in my article. Those dissimilarity indices will take the value one if the two sets are completely different, completely dissimilar. For example, if the industry structure is completely different between two observations, as it will take the value zero if they are identical or very similar distribution or structure of the industry with the example or distribution of the weight of the share part of the shift chain instrument. And hence, potentially, the errors between observation with very similar distribution of the sets of weights of shares will have dependent errors, as if the sets of weights of shares are completely dissimilar, most certainly there is no dependency between the errors. Computing all the pairwise distances will give a distance matrix that we will use to construct the dependency structure with the arbitrary clustering method. The arbitrary clustering method allows to define and play with a matrix called S, which represents the dependence between the errors between each observation in the variance-covariance matrix. So typically, in this context, we will define the matrix S as the matrix of distances 
between all the observations that we have computed with our dissimilarity index. The matrix S is typically composed by zero and ones. Zero reflecting the fact that between two observations, there is, you assume that there is no dependency, and one if you assume that there is dependency between two observations, or you make this assumption. And typically, the distance or dissimilarity indices that we have computed give or return continuous value. So we have to set a threshold above which, so above which distance you assume that the, the observation or the set of weights of each observation are different enough to assume that the errors are not dependent to each other. And once you define these thresholds in the arbitrary clustering methods, the value in the distance matrix will be once if you are below this threshold, so you allow if the observations are relatively close or similar, you allow for these dependencies and it translates in values of one in the dependence matrix. And for other values above the threshold, distant enough, the value will be zero, meaning that you assume that there is no dependency between those errors. This method answers the growing worry discussed in seminars and in the scientific literature about the dependency between the errors when using a shift chair instrument. It also shows the usefulness of the remarkable framework of arbitrary clustering. If you want to read and know more detail about this strategy, you will find the link to my article in the description below. And if you want to keep discussing scientific research online, subscribe and click the bell button of this channel to get all the updates. Thank you very much for watching.